Everybody, we'd, we'd like to get started. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and uh, taking part in uh, things going on in the community. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mayor Rice for having us here. And um, we've been, what, several months now going all over the county. And uh, we've been here at Skyline once. And I think we had a little better turnout this time than we did last. We really appreciate that. Uh, we're here to go over uh, the facts of, uh, you know, the reason we proposed the one cent sales tax. Um, you know, we're by no means trying to talk anybody into voting for or against it, but we're supporting our proposal with facts. Uh, and um, we got a little bit of uh, business to take care of in, in a regular meeting. And, and uh, after that, uh, Matthew's got some uh, the facts that he wants to go over, and then we'll open it up for a question and answer session. So I'll turn it over to Matthew. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. And, uh, we'll call our uh, Jackson County Commission work session for July 20th to order. Uh, have our roll call. District 1, Mr. Guffey. Present. District 2, Mr. Venable. Present. District 3, Mr. Miller. Present. District 4, Mr. Level. Present. The chairman also present. Right. We have a quorum present. Uh, we'll have our invocation by Mr. Jeff Arnold and our pledge by Mr. Venable. Let's pray. Our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for this day. Lord, we thank you for the mighty blessings you afford us. Lord, we thank you for this community. Lord, we thank you for this county and this country. Lord, we, we just are thankful to see these people here today uh, interested. Lord, we're just uh, thankful for uh, a united commission. Lord, we just uh, pray that you just uh, give them uh, blessings and, and, and just give them patience. And Lord, just uh, everything we do, Lord, we pray that it would bring honor and glory to you. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Got the agenda that went out for the email that did did have a meeting item. That's been changed because I didn't think we'd be prepared to move forward with that. That is on the work session now. So we have two items on the work session agenda. We'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Motion, we have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed, say no. Okay. Uh, we've had no one sign up to speak uh, in addition for this part of the meeting. Um, we'll move straight into our discussion items, and the first one is the county engineer's contract. Uh, you all are sent an email today, if you didn't get it last week, for a temporary contract or contract for the assistant engineer. Um, this is something that had been discussed, I guess, uh, the fact that we've not had a county engineer for the past few months, or a couple of months. Uh, so if everyone would please review that, I'd like to see if we can move forward with that next week. And right now, that's for your review. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on that, then we can discuss that uh, at the following meeting. So are there any questions or comments at this time on that? I don't know if everyone's had time to review it or not today. but Okay, if there's none, we'll again discuss that next week at our meeting. Uh, next item is Ms. Kim Chapman. Do you have a discussion or question for us? Yes. Comment? <coughs> I just have a question about the, that there was a local law passed down in Montgomery and it's section 453680 and the law, and it was passed in April 4, 2004 by the previous commission under Mr. Tidmore. It wasn't you guys and I don't think you guys really know that much about it. And if you would look at number five and the law reads, additional court costs in the amount of $10 per day shall be assessed and collected upon conviction against each person incarcerated or booked in the Jackson County Jail. So after they've been convicted, they're supposed to be, um, um, that, that, that cost is supposed to go into effect after the conviction. And uh, when a defendant is uh, convicted, he enters into a contract with the court. And there's an issue that is called an ex post facto bill. It's Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution. And it's also in the state of Alabama Constitution, too. I've got it down here for you. And uh, basically, it said, and my question, and what I want to know is, does this impose of a daily fee upon prisoners after they've been already sentenced in front of the judge when they go to be sentenced constitute an increase in punishment after they've been convicted? 
I wanna wonder if you could ask the Attorney General if that would uh, if that's breaking the constitution because they're supposed that sentence is supposed to happen right there when they're convicted. But you can't get that sentence to happen until after you know how many days they have stayed in the jail. And then I wanted to bring up the section of the Alabama Constitution, Article 1, Section 20 states that no person person shall be imprisoned for a debt. And what is a debt? And I looked this up in the Black's Law. And a debt is a sum of money due by contract. Now, I've been told by some say that they're not going to be jailed because of the debt. It's, they're going to be jailed because there's a, a not complying with the judge's <coughs> orders. And that's kind of like splitting hairs because the fact remains there would be no order if there was no debt. So I wanted to leave this with you to see if Mr. Porter can do something up and give me some answers. Okay. As we discussed, yeah, we'll take a look at that and, okay. and see what the, what can be moved. Do you have a question on here, the question you wanted asked? Mm -hmm. Is that listed on here? Uh, no, I just wanted to I just wanted to find out if it's going against the constitution of the state and the federal constitution. That's the main thing. I see. Okay. I just want to see, you know, if it's going against the constitution, if we're breaking the law. All right. Thank you. Any questions or comments on that? Uh, I have a question. If you're asking for an attorney general's opinion. Mm -hmm. or, or the county attorney's opinion? Well, actually, uh, the attorney general or the county would be fine, either, you know, both of them, but I know that the um, law is law. Opinions don't stand up in law. Well, know? in order to, to get an attorney general's opinion, we'll have to have the, the question that you want to ask to go to the attorney general. Okay, I can do that. Okay. I'll email it to Bobby if it's okay with you. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. So that uh, concludes the discussion items for our meeting agenda. We'll move on then to uh, act discussion of the sales tax and save our reports for uh, afterwards. And uh, I'll stand if that's okay. Uh, I do want to quickly go over some of the facts and figures, some information about uh, county finances, uh, this sales tax, um, talk about where we want to spend some of these dollars, and of course the real reason we're here is to answer any questions that uh, anyone here may still have about the sales tax or, or thoughts or concerns that you have. This is obviously incredibly important. We've been throughout the county over the past uh, several months uh, trying to put the information out there, as Mr. Venable said, sharing those facts. And I do want to thank, uh, we've got uh, actually a couple of mayors here today, but thank you uh, to Skyline also for, for hosting us here in the town hall. Thank you to the council members also. And uh, uh, we, again, we appreciate the relationships that we have with our communities, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity uh, to share this information with you all tonight to, to come out and take your time to do that. So I'm going to jump right in and go through this uh, very quickly, as we tend to do, and then open it up. We'll talk, talk questions, comments, concerns about this or anything that the county has going on. So. First thing I do want to clear up, uh, one thing that continues to surprise some folks is that the county gets no sales tax right now. Um, what is, I don't know what the sales tax in Skyline is, it is 2%. It so right now it's 8% within the town limits, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So so for, for Skyline, you've got 4 cents of that 8 that goes to the state, uh, 2 cents which goes to the town of Skyline, and 2 cents of the quote unquote county tax goes 100% towards education. The county doesn't get any of that. And that gets split up between the county board and the city board of education. So that's one thing we're trying to get, you know, this is obviously a revenue source we're looking for, uh, but right now it's a revenue source that we just don't have. We get zero of those total dollars that are spent when you go to the food, food value or the uh, Dollar General anywhere else, or anywhere in the county when you're spending those dollars. Uh, this county government does not get those dollars to support our roadways, to take care of sheriff's departments, support fire departments, or anything else uh, that we do in the process of the business that we do. Um, I, I won't go too much depth, but uh, as we all know, we've had this budget deficit situation. We've uh, kind of announced it shortly after we were in office. A uh, very high budget deficit of $1.6 million deficit. Uh, over time, we've reduced that to $350,000. Uh, and, and the point I'm making that, or want to make in that, is that we have done a lot of work in trying to reduce the cost of operating county government. We've gotten rid of as much waste as we've uh, uh, been able to uh, find. We have cut several staff positions. Um, we've reduced up different contract expenditures that we did not think were getting bang for the buck. So a lot of things went into that process of cutting those dollars to get from that $1.6 million deficit down to where we're at right now. Uh, 
and we, we feel like we've been very responsible with the taxpayer dollars and of course in going forward with these uh, dollars and we'll talk about how we're going to spend these dollars uh, from this sales tax we want to continue to be responsible with how we uh, go through this process some information about where do we get our dollars from obviously like I said we don't get any sales tax so the biggest revenue sources we have are from the uh, gas tax that funds our public works department in total uh, and then for our general fund is the uh, uh, property tax and the TVA in lieu of tax. Now when it comes to TVA in lieu of tax, uh, even the town of Skyline has seen continue to all our towns and communities have seen a decreased dollar from that. For the county government, we've had a drop of $432,000 since 2012 just in the TVA in lieu of tax. So that's a huge decrease. Our gas tax dropped $300,000 in the past four years. So, you know, these dollars, our revenue, uh, revenues are going down, and of course the cost to do business is always and will continue to go up. The cost to pay roads has doubled and tripled in, uh, for certain types of equipment. Um, and just, you know, the cost of business is going, utilities, whatever else the case may be, we know the cost keeps going up. So the best way I know how to say it is revenues are here, expenses continue to climb, and now revenues are dropping. So. Uh, with the TVA lieu of tax drop with the coal plant closure, we're going to continue to see some, some drop in that. We've got to come up with a revenue source to take care of Jackson County and do some of the things, as I stated, that we want to do. Uh, some, some quick facts about where your money goes. When you go into the probate office and renew your driver's license, you pay $36.25. The county only gets $1.50 of that. Uh, when you uh, go pay for your car tag fee, you did a calculation, someone that lives in Scottsboro, a $140 tag fee is what they pay, the county only gets $20 of that. So a very important piece of information is when you write these checks to Jackson County Government, Jackson County Government does not get all those dollars. Uh, this being split up between the state, the city, if you're within a municipality, the county, and education, uh, the uh, hospital, fire departments have a small millage tax in place. So those dollars are being split up and, and separated through a lot of different agencies. And of course, the county government is the one that uh, handles that process. Um, I won't go too, too detailed about the, the cost of paving. I will say that we paved 12 miles of road last year. This year, we put zero dollars in the lo local dollars into paving. Uh, if we were to continue even at last year's rate, it'd take us 90 years to get back to the roads we paved last year. So we know that that's not sustainable. We have to come up with some new source, some new way to fund uh, paving uh, and a lot of the other processes that we have. Um, and I do want to talk in a little bit more detail. Why are we pursuing a sales tax? We, you know, there's a lot of different ideas that folks have come to us about property tax or tag fees or this, that, or the other. Um, uh, why are we pursuing a sales tax? So the first thing is with a sales tax uh, is, uh, uh, with, as opposed to a property tax, let's say, uh, with a property tax, we have seven and a half mills. The county has a seven and a half mill property tax. We would have to more than double our portion of property tax to get the same amount we're looking at this sales tax. So add an additional nine mills on top of that in order to get the same amount of dollars we're looking at from the sales tax. Now, in addition to that, you look at property tax. Property tax does not grow like sales tax does. Sales tax has had a steady growth in Jackson County. Some communities report that even in that 2007-2008 downturn that they didn't have a downturn. So we continue to see sales tax grow where property tax, again, doesn't have that same type of growth or same rate of growth. Uh, we looked at some of the numbers from, what, 2007 to 11, I think. There was a slight increase in property tax. And it's been... Good. One year, I think it was. One year. Yeah, there, there's, you know, there's a, a slight growth there, but it's not near the amount. Plus, in, in Jackson County, we're unique from a lot of counties. We have a whole lot of property that's been bought up by the state. Uh, they don't pay property taxes, and of course the Tennessee TBA has a whole lot of property which they don't pay those taxes on. So when it comes to property tax, you know, uh, we don't save the bang for the buck there. In addition, as to pursuing a sales tax, is why not a property tax? Is with a sales tax now, all these fishermen and hikers and campers and cavers, all those folks that come into Jackson County that visit us on a daily basis, now they can help support all the services that we provide to all of our county residents. With a property tax or with a tag fee or with any of these other options that are out there, uh, th those uh, responsibility is on Jackson County taxpayers. With a sales tax, now we can spread that responsibility to all these folks that come into Jackson County and visit. And, uh, and again, these are things municipalities are now benefiting from. Uh, <coughs> the school system, obviously, education benefits from that. We need to be able to participate on that as well. And again, take some of that burden in the long term take some of that burden off of the citizens of Jackson County, which that will do, because with that growth, uh, we should not have to pursue further taxes uh, for the future. 
So uh, that's a very quick rundown of some of the things of where our dollars come from, um, uh, what it costs to do some of the business that we do, and why we're pursuing a sales tax. What do we want to use these dollars for? Uh, the first thing, obviously, is, is and the biggest amount we want to put towards is paving county roadways. We want to put $1.5 million towards the paving of county roadways. Uh, like I said, last year we put zero dollars, so this is going to be a huge, or this year we put zero local dollars, so this is going to be a huge advancement over this year, and even much better than what we put 400000 last year, so over three times as much as we did, almost four times as much as we did last year. Uh, plus looking at doing some of our own paving, which maybe then can expand the number of roadways to pave even further. We, like I said, I've said time and time again, we've got to come up with a new way to, to pave our roads. Uh, someone mentioned to me that it had been mentioned to them, why not pursue a five cent gas tax? If we did a five cent gas tax, uh, I think we'd bring in, what, about $1.1 million, $1.2 million, because we've got that three cent in now. Right. Um, so even less than that, actually, probably about a million dollars. Uh, so even a five cent gas tax is less than what we plan to put forward for, for paving uh, just for this uh, sales tax. So again, the benefits here as opposed to pursuing five or six different items, we feel this one. Uh, second item, support and provision of uh, resource officers in our schools. When it comes to safety, you know, two huge things about this obviously, and you know, the tragedy in Chattanooga I think continues to remind us, we see these things constantly, in a sense I wonder, you know, sometimes if we're not, we don't become immune, we don't think about, but we need to be prepared, we need to have this protection uh, at least, as, you know, it's a very small bit of protection, but some amount of protection for the children in our schools. Um, just to have that asset there, have the resource there, uh, would hopefully prevent any issues from happening or, or uh, deter anything from happening. But if nothing else, you've got that person there that can respond if there's an immediate need uh, within that school. Also, someone that uh, forms relationships with those students. I've heard some stories about some of the resource officers in Scottsboro and how those, those uh, uh, officers were, you know, they get to know the students, those students know they can call on them if there's ever an issue or a concern. So that's the kind of protection that you need there. In addition to that, the, just the benefit of having more deputies throughout Jackson County. Um, what we're looking at is five to six resource officers, so no, this isn't going to get one in every school. If we get the school board to participate, you know, hopefully uh, we can do that and, and we'll have a few more officers throughout Jackson County. But in addition to the protection for our students, we've got just the benefit of having more deputies throughout Jackson County. So if there is an absolute emergency that happens, you know, Skyline or North Sand Mountain or somewhere else, uh, Bryant, uh, uh, the far, farther reaches of Jackson County maybe, we can respond much more quickly. If we've got a deputy in this area and they absolutely have to get somewhere for an emergency need, uh, then we can respond to that as opposed to having to wait 30 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour for a deputy to get to uh, uh, get to that area. Um, support of our volunteer fire departments. I know we've got several volunteer firefighters here today. This is just, you know, again, another important thing because of a shift in the funding. Again, this is another thing the town of uh, Skyline has uh, uh, probably seen with the shift in the millage rates and millage tax. Our fire department here has uh, uh, lost a few dollars. I'm not sure exactly how many uh, it was for Skyline. But again, supporting fire departments is incredibly important. And, and one of the best examples I guess I can use is the fire that happened in Higdon about uh, maybe a month and a half ago now, six weeks or so. Uh, we had eight county departments, one Georgia department, one DeKalb County department respond to that fire. So just because that fire department's not immediately around you does not mean that someone in your community is not going to have a need for that fire department to respond in the future. So that was a great example of our, our departments working together and, and all the folks coming together for that uh, fire. Uh, but with this funding change, I know I've also heard, I think there are three departments that are uh, uh, of higher risk of closing due to you know, the funding and situations like that. So if they don't come up with some, some sort of funding to, to cover this uh, funding loss, then we could lose some departments. Of course, if you live in an area where a department has to close, your insurance rates are going to go up. If you live next to an area where your, that department closes, now you're sending your resources next door and not keeping them uh, kind of local. And how many, I'm not really sure, how many fire districts do we have in the county? 17. 17? So again, you know, with 17 fire districts, uh, if you drop two or we, if, if we were to lose all three, you're spreading again those resources from those 17 districts, now you're having to, to fill up three of them with other existing departments. So 
Um, in addition to all of that, I think the bottom line of this is that we need to support our fire departments. Uh, the county, that, as far as I know, has never given an annual appropriation to fire departments. And these are folks, again, you guys that are, that are putting your lives on the line, you answer to the, the, you have the wrecks, and I saw a lot of the photos, I got to visit uh, with the fire department up here like, a couple weeks ago, a lot of the photos from the, the uh, shoot there, and you, all the wrecks you respond to, and I know that, you know, when we have storms, you clear the trees from the road, uh, and then, of course, you know, in the case of fire, you respond to that, so uh, the volunteer time of sometimes putting your own dollars into this, we understand that as a commission, we feel very, uh, much the need to support our fire departments through this uh, sales tax. Um, community industrial business development, I think this is where we get the dollars back. Right now, you know, we have Google, which is a $600 million investment in Jackson County. Uh, Jackson County Commission coffers stand to see very little from that investment uh, because, because uh, the way the tax structure works, we have to abate our taxes in order to get those businesses here, so we don't get property tax. If we had the sales tax, we wouldn't get it from them. But with the sales tax, where the dollars would come in, would be all those contractors, everybody that's working to build those facilities, everybody that's going to be working to tear, tear down the Widow's Creek facilities. Uh, those folks spend money, and, and hopefully a lot of local folks, but all the folks that come in, too, are going to spend money in Jackson County, and with the sales tax, we can benefit from that. Right now, again, uh, if we move forward like we are today, we stand to see very little. We probably would not even see our investment return uh, uh, from what this the, the county put into getting new whatever. We would not see that investment return based on how the tax structure is right now. So I think it's a pretty profound statement. A $600 million investment, probably one of the largest investments we'll see uh, in Jackson County, uh, if not the largest investment we'll ever see from this point forward. And, and we... Uh, uh, you know, we stand to see little to nothing from that benefit. Now, I do want to clarify, TVA in lieu of tax, we expect we'll have one year of, of uh, jump because of that, but then we'll continue to go down because the Belfont, Belfont plant is under depreciation. So um, it'll help us kind of cover our losses for one year, we expect, but uh, it will continue to go down. So uh, again, the, the way that the process works, why this is so important, industrial development, it helps all our communities. When we bring industry and business into Jackson County, that means more tax dollars for Skyline or Scottsboro or Stevenson or whoever else throughout Jackson County. If we can, if we can get some uh, um, retail or, or fuel business or whatever in Paint Rock Valley and Bryant area and, and uh, Bridgeport where we can keep those folks in Jackson County, that's more dollars that we're, again, circulating here in Jackson County. So to be able to invest in water, sewer, gas, uh, give incentives, uh, sidewalks, whatever we can do to bring more industry and business into Jackson County. Uh, right now, again, we do it once we spend the dollars, the dollars are gone. But with the sales tax, if we do that, we see those dollars come back and we see everybody benefit. So to me, that's one of the biggest parts of this as far as a key component that we have to invest in if we want this to be a long-term fix. A lot of these other things are, are some needs, some short, obviously the general fund, the short-term need and, and the long-term, but to be able to solve the long-term problem, that's where the long-term fix comes in is through industrial development. And then the final thing is to fix our budget deficit, $350,000, and we get this question a lot too. If we have a deficit of $350,000, why do we need $3.3 million? That's very simple because right now we're not paving roads. Right now we're not supporting our fire departments. Right now we're not uh, investing in industrial development near what we need to be investing in, that, in industrial development. Um, there's, obviously all these needs are not being met, so that's why we went well beyond this three point three or the $350,000. Uh, we could easily pass something or try to get something pushed through. Um, it'd have to go through legislature to fix the $350,000, but what do we do next year when TVA and loop tax drop down again? Uh, we're still not investing in industrial development if we do that. We're still not paving roads. So this is both a short-term fix, but it also is a very much a long-term fix. This is going to carry us for years into the future, and we hope to have, we, I, I really do believe we've got this set up in the program right to where we're going to see the benefits from this for years and years and years to come. So before we take any questions or anything like that, uh, the commissioners, do you have anything else you want to add to that? Okay. So questions, comments, concerns? Again, you might mention what it does not, what is not taxed. Okay, yeah, let me do that real quick. Things that, that this tax is not applicable to. I had someone tell me, you know, 10% or 1% of their income uh, uh, that this applies to. So it doesn't apply to 1% of your income. It applies to 1% of certain items that you spend. So it doesn't apply to your mortgage. It doesn't apply to rent. It doesn't apply to utilities. It doesn't apply to health care. It doesn't apply to... Uh, 
to uh, automobiles. automobiles. Uh, you know, all those the, the real, all those big expenses uh, are not included. And of course, we looked at numbers and all that. About 23 percent of your income we see is spent on taxable items. Uh, so for everybody, it's going to be different. For my, me personally, my family is about 30 dollars per person in my household. So it's 120 dollars a year is what this tax is going to cost me individually. Everybody, you know, spends differently, so you have to come up with that number. But our, our guesstimate is about 20 to 35 or 40 dollars per person per year is what this uh, is going to cost us. And again, you know, that's low in a sense because we have so many folks that come from outside of Jackson County and spend dollars here. Yes. Uh, yes, my name is Joe Anderson. I'm a new business owner here in Skyline. I, and I pay my taxes every month uh, to the state as far as sales tax goes. And there's this little separate kitty where it says, your local tax, and part of it goes to Skyline, part of it goes to Jackson County, and you just said that you guys don't get that money, so where is it going? We write a check every month once we receive those dollars. We write those checks to the Scottsboro Board of Education and the Jackson County Board of Education. Split okay. up basically. So that's going for education? Correct. Good. What kind of a deal did you guys strike with Google so that the schools in this county can get a beef up? I'd like to hear about that. The, uh, the, the way the state laws work, we. Taxes for schools cannot be abated. So whenever any industry, that's another benefit of, of the industrial development and investment, any industry that we bring to Jackson County that comes here, uh, those school taxes, they'll continue to, to be paid because those cannot be abated. That's a state law. So they will continue to benefit from that. I should get additional, what was it? At, yeah, Google's going to be a huge investment. We. It's been estimated 1.5 million a year across both systems, so it's just gonna, it, it is going to be a huge, huge investment or a huge benefit for education. Another quick question here: uh, Is the is Jackson County uh, having to make some kind of an infrastructure commitment uh, so Google will come in? Can you give me a little bit about that? There are several entities with this, the city of Bridgeport, Jackson County. There are a few things that we have to commit to, but most of that has to do with uh, uh, working with them to get federal dollars. Um, our investment financially is going to be minimal, and that's a, a big reason why our investment is minimal is because TBA came to the table in such a big way. But on Google, thankfully, our investment is going to be minimal financially. But we will have to be a processing agent for a lot of activity. Have you got any idea uh, how the school systems are going to beef up their curriculum so that they can meet the needs of Google in the future? That I don't know. I, I, that'd be a question for for no, education folks of, uh, involved there. Um, but uh, yeah, that I can't answer. Thank you. Someone here may be able to afterwards. I do know. No thing we need to call it is having some conversations. Right. Thomas Cook. The money that you may be spending on paving will not only be those dollars, but it will be also matching funds from the state and federal government also, so it will not just be the one and a half million, correct? Right. We get Right now we get about 550000 a year, 530000 a year from federal dollars. But if we ever see something like ATRIP again, we've, we've spent what we can spend on matching stuff. So if we ever want to get matching stuff, again, unless we find some way to come up with monies, we've, we've got to have the dollars in, in the pot. So. Uh, yeah, if, if the opportunity comes up where some more federal dollars like that are available, this will give us the opportunity to do that. And hopefully they'll cut some of their requirements so we can kind of expand what we can pay with it. Right now they limit what we can pay with those dollars. Other questions? So the, the A trip was a, a state program and they borrowed federal dollars essentially to do several roads throughout Jackson County. Excuse me. Does anybody know exactly how many we did in Jackson County for our part? It was nine million dollars on the mileage. Okay. So nine million dollars. Basically that's an eighty twenty grant, so we would pay uh, twenty percent of that to get the projects done. So uh, 17, uh, 17 in the earlier Natrip project, 8 was an Natrip project, is that correct? Both of those rows were done, and of course, you know, three bridges. Yeah, three bridges throughout the county, several other county rows. That was done with those matching dollars. And again, those dollars were set aside in what is the piggy bank. We ended up borrowing money to help pay for that so we wouldn't have a cash flow issue as we went through this whole process. Um, 
but that was a, that is a, an example of those matching dollars, an 80-20 uh, match where we pay 20% of that $9 million in order to get those projects done. And it's been a huge benefit. You know, normally you're not going to borrow money to pave roads because your the length of your loan may last, if not longer, the length of the time to pay it back. But when you're doing a 20% match on it, it's a no-brainer to be able to, to take those dollars. So that's what we did uh, in order to pay for all those projects. We all could go to the atrium. We could have went to the ramp program. Right. Well, the, yeah, the A trip was benefit better benefit for everybody throughout Jackson County as opposed to limiting. Uh, we would have had fewer roads paved altogether had we went the other way. Other than that. Another question? Yes? Uh, what are you going to be paying the new county engineer versus what the previous county engineer made? All right, we'll be paying the new one ninety-eight thousand a year. The previous one made one hundred fifty-nine and some change. Um, the reason we settled, you know, that ninety-eight, obviously, the state does reimburse for seventy percent, I think, seventy-five percent of that salary. Uh, also, he's had many years with the system. I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see a huge change and a great benefit uh, from this new engineer. I'm very excited. He'll actually start next Monday. Uh, but I'm very excited about his participation. I think folks in Jackson County are going to see a very quick change uh, in the way business is done in our public works department. We know, and that goes back to kind of the, the notion of working efficiently in Jackson County. Um, we, you know, obviously I feel like we've, this commission has worked hard, Mr. Manning has worked very hard with us to get us to where we're at. All the departments, the, the elected officials, everybody's put time, effort into reducing budgets to get us to where we're at right now, to keep where we're at just a $350,000 deficit. Uh, that's not going to stop if this tax passes. So, you know, public works, we know that there's things that need to be done. We know there's ways to do things better, and we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, but if there's something that we see needs to be done, we're going to continue to make that effort. It doesn't matter if, if the dollars are there or not there. We've got to do our best, and I think, uh, uh, Again, we'll see some big changes in public works. That's one department we know. The workers know uh, there's some changes that need to happen out there, so we'll be making those over the next few months as we get our new engineer in place. And how long is the contract? Contract is for five years. I think there's a one-year probationary period and then four years after that. Now, are you going to hire another assistant revenue commissioner now that Mr. Arnold is officially our revenue commissioner? That's We've not really talked much about that under the current circumstances, of course, it's kind of difficult to, to plan that. Every position, well, we have, I think we've got one to replace right now in the revenue office, but we've, we've lost four or five positions and have cut those and uh, left most of them out. I think we've but, but that'll be up to him. He's the elected official of that department to bring it to us if that's what he chooses to do. I just wondered if we were going to replace them. Yeah, at this time, that's not, you know, there's no, we're not moving towards that way. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Yes. Yeah, you've talked about what we will do if we get this passed. Talk about what you will do if it doesn't. Okay. So, so the negative effects, if this tax doesn't pass, so, you know, I, we hear all the time, live within your means, you've got to live within the dollars you have, and, and we understand that completely. The Commission's not afraid to make the cuts if we have to make the cuts, but we do feel it's incredibly important that folks understand what those cuts involve. So the first thing, you know, and talking about some of these things that, that we uh, want to do, right now, we, if we put zero road dollars into road paving last year, you know, that doesn't look very good for the future of what we're going to be able to put into paving next year and the following year, so on and so forth. So obviously, you know, we're going to have problems with our roadways, and, and when they get to a certain condition, if we can't maintain them, if we can't pave it, you've got to come up with a solution, and most likely that'll be, you know, back to the dirt in a sense. Um, so roadways will continue to have major issues with our roadways and have to come up with some sort of solution, moving those back to dirt, as I've said. Uh, we won't have resource officers. We won't be able to invest in industrial development as we want. Of course, our fire departments, the, the possibility of those closing. We've got two, left, two places left that we can cut, and actually before I say that, again, in living within our means, uh, uh, it's also been mentioned that uh, you know, we get plenty of dollars from all the tickets and the court cases and all those things that happen in Jackson County. We get $325,000 a year from, from speeding tickets and court cases, everything like that that goes on within Jackson County, we get about $325,000 a year. That goes towards our jail. We have a jail budget of $2 million a year. 
Now, this isn't a matter of living within those means. It's a matter of there really aren't enough dollars there to maintain and do all the things that we have to do. And like a business, you know, a business, if you're not selling a certain type of product or if a certain department is not doing so well, you know, a business has the opportunity to close that. And we've, we've tried our best to operate county government like a business, but when it comes to a point, we can't do that anymore because we can't just close down the probate office. We can't just close down uh, the revenue office or the commission office or the sheriff's department or the jail. Uh, so in that sense, we have to stop acting like a business and we have to come up with new revenue sources. So the, the, other, the, the two things left that we have to cut, uh, there are still appropriations, a few appropriations going to different entities, rescue squad, libraries, um, what else we got? Senior Senior health department, yeah, health department's a big one, CURX, the ARC, several different agencies that we still support in that sense. That those would be the ones off the top uh, that we would have to cut. And then the next place we would have to cut because that wouldn't solve, again, the, the problem. Uh, would be closing the courthouse uh, once a week, probably some more elimination of staff within the courthouse. Uh, it starts to affect your services in that sense. When you go get your tag or you go to get your driver's license or whatever else, you're looking at uh, less opportunity and probably longer lines in doing that. Um, uh, again, one of the biggest impacts goes back to the roadways. So the, the negative effects are there. It's not a matter of, oh, this is just going to blow over if it doesn't pass. We have to cut. We cannot continue to operate on a deficit. We're not the federal government. You know, we, we can't do that. So we've done it to this length because we wanted to make sure that the approach we were heading for was the right approach, that it was the thing that needed to be done. And uh, I feel very comfortable saying this whole commission supports this process and supports what we've come to with this sales tax and, and strongly believes that, you know, this... Uh, that making these cuts, if we have to go this last stretch of cuts, it's really going to hurt. Now again, if we make cuts, it's not just $350,000. Uh, we've got to account for the drop in TVA and lieu of tax next year. We've got to figure out what we're going to do for our aging infrastructure, you know, the courthouse. If we don't maintain that building, it's going to have to be torn down just like the, uh, and that sounds crazy, we, we obviously you wouldn't want to tear that down, but you have to maintain your facilities. The building across from First National Bank not been maintained, we had to tear it down. Uh, and that was an asset, you know, for the county. So for any of our facilities, we have to be able to maintain that and do some things, so some dollars are going to have to be spent there. Uh, again, we've got to account for TV and lieu of tax loss. We've got to figure out a way to pave at least five or six miles of road a year. So the, the cuts are not $350,000. If we have to cut, we're looking at another $900,000 to a million dollars uh, for next year, you know, going forward. Uh, and if we continue to say in lieu of tax drops, that's more cuts in the future. Nothing that we're doing, you know, we're working very hard with the parks and different things like that, but there's very limited capability for us to raise our dollars. We can't increase sales, you know, um, in a quick manner like a business may be able to advertise and do so. So we're limited within the confines we have, and that's why these cuts would be necessary immediately uh, if, 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 if we don't have the dollars to do this, uh, uh, move forward and do the things we think need to be done. Does that answer that? In a long way. It's not plan B though. What's that? It's not plan B. That's what you think you'd have to do if the tax doesn't pass. Right. So what's plan B? Well that that's that's the thing. That is plan B. Yeah. But you know, we spent we spent several months out campaigning on this sales tax, discussing, explaining, showing why this is important. Uh, if people, I, I strongly feel if it gets voted down, it's not voted down because it's a sales tax, it's voted down because it's a tax, because people don't like taxes. Uh, this is the best, I, I, I again strongly believe this is the best tax that we can put in Jackson County that will have the least impact overall when we look at the picture and have the greatest benefit overall uh, when we look at the whole picture. So. You know, as far as Plan B, you know, if, if you say that's not Plan B, pursuing a property tax or something like that next year, that's great, but, you know, we're looking for a fix. We're looking to solve the problem, and that's what we feel this is. This isn't kicking the can down the road. This isn't saying we're going to get through this year and try to figure out again next year. This is solving the problem, and either way, we want to get a solution to this, uh, you know, and, and get moving forward. Yes, sir. Sir, I've got a question. Uh, I understand that when bodies of government have to make difficult decisions, sometimes they rely upon uh, experts to give an analysis of the situation. Is there a financial firm or some individual who is responsible for analysis of this financial situation that has made this recommendation to you? 
we have our county, uh, our uh, uh, financial administrator. If, if you look at any of the audits we've been through, um, the audits will show that you know revenues are or show that we've had a budget deficit. That's that side of it. As far as the revenue expenditure side, you know we could bring someone in, but I think that you know if that's what's required. But I really think you're going to find the same thing. It's very obvious the revenues are down, our expenditures are up. Uh, Mr. Manning served in the private sector for how many years? Thirty years. Thirty years. So that's one big reason why we chose him because he had a private sector sense of uh, sense of mind about how budgets and things need to work. Now he's been very surprised, I think, by how government works. But I really do feel that he's brought that to the county, and we try very hard to work in that sense. So I feel comfortable with the analysis that we've had uh, based on the audits that we've seen, based on Mr. Manning's review of the financial situation. And we have spent, you know, again, this sales tax wasn't something we just came up with, or any tax. We, we've spent two years studying and reviewing and trying to understand all this. So I feel very comfortable that where we're at is, is a good analysis of where we are. Thank you, sir. And how are you going to replace the eighty thousand dollars if the tax doesn't pass? The eighty thousand dollars is coming from, like I said, our piggy bank. Uh, it's an investment I think that's worth making, and uh, it, it's something that has to be done. We we can't continue to push this off and wait and hope and whatever else we needed to get this done. It needed to be done last year. Uh, of course, you know we couldn't get it through the legislature last year, so we did this year, and we just need to get it done. So. Uh, It'll come from that piggy bank. It's unfortunate, but that's we've got to make the investment to see where our future is. I think it's worth it. Can you, can you talk a little bit about how the the current distribution of the sales taxes work between the city and the county, and how money spent in Scottsboro goes to, to help the city of Scottsboro, and money spent by county residents spent there to support what the city gets, and then kind of what the population is between the city and the county. Okay. Well, the, the big thing, I guess, what you're saying, kind of how, how when we spend dollars in Scottsboro, how does that affect the whole picture? That, that's kind of one of, you know, that's a huge benefit, actually, of this sales tax. Right now, when you spend dollars in Scottsboro, if you go to Walmart or the, the, the restaurants or whatever else you do with business in Scottsboro, those dollars are staying in Scottsboro, with the exception of the, uh, the two-cent tax we have for, uh, you know, the county that gets split up between the, the county and city school systems. But those three, those three cents that you're paying in Scottsboro, that stays in those city limits. That's, that helps their resources. So again, if you go to Walmart once a week and you spend $100 a week or $200 a week on groceries or whatever else, you're not supporting your county roads. You're not taking care of your fire departments. You're not taking care of the sheriff's departments. You're not doing any of those things when you spend those dollars uh, uh, in Scottsboro. Or, if you, I mean, really, if you spend those in any municipalities. So, Obviously, Scottsboro is where most of the dollars are spent. I think the mayor told us last week there's about $2.8 million per penny that they receive. Is that right? Do you remember that, Mr. Manning? He said $2.8 million per penny. Okay. okay. Per penny. Yeah. That was on city residents. So right. So, so uh, you know, those dollars, again, we're spending all those dollars there, but we're not seeing that benefit throughout Jackson County. So by having this penny tax in place, now, all you know, and there's a... I'd, I'd say a huge amount of folks that shop within the city of Scottsboro do not live within the city of Scottsboro. So now we're spreading those dollars back throughout the county. Uh, that's not going to happen again if we isolate where that tax is collected. With this, now we can spread that throughout. So I think that answers the first part. And what was the second part of that question? Just the, uh, the, the roughly the population percentage that lives within the city versus out. Roughly 14,000 with this in the city limits, so about 49, or 39,000 throughout the rest of the county. You said 28 percent. Oh, 28 percent. What the, what the mayor of Scottsboro had uh, mentioned uh, within the city of Scottsboro. So, but those city residents, if they spend money within the city, should this tax pass? Actually, those dollars would would still come into the pool of money that would go out into the county. Right. Like That's the, right. Yeah, that was. I won't get too much into the proposal Mayor Potter had last week, but I, it, I don't think it's the right way to go. Um, so yes, those dollars from this penny will be spread throughout Jackson County. Other questions or comments? Yeah, I know. That, did you want to add up before we? Yeah. Whatever. Okay. <coughs> Um, I just wanted basically, I'm, I'm the administrator here, so that means I work for you guys. I work for everybody in our county, and my job is to try to do the best we can do with the funds that we have to operate. And that doesn't mean just out here in the county, 
people in Scottsboro. So my job is to is to work for everyone in this county and analyze the data and try to give these guys the best information they can to make their decisions. But I think it's really important for me to talk, not as an administrator, but as a county resident. So most of the things I want to touch on right now come from myself being a county resident. I have an advantage of knowing the numbers that make this up, but just from a county resident side, uh, this is more or less where this is going. <coughs> and I'll, I'll kind of read it because I don't want to miss the points. I think they're really important, and I think most of you will agree with me. I'm a local county resident. I've lived in Jackson County all my life. Why would I support a one cent sales tax? I mean, that's, I've got, I can talk all night on why I would support it, but I want to just condense it down for you. This current commission that you're, you're looking at, they inherited a lot of problems. They're not trying to place blame or anything like that, but they inherited a lot of problems. Somebody should have seen some of this freight train coming a few years ago and didn't. So, uh, we just have to accept what we're dealt and what we're dealing with right now. And what may have worked 30 years ago does not necessarily work anymore. And our county is strapped to some things that were done 30 or 40 years ago. And it may have been good then. And it may have worked then. But that doesn't work now. Okay? And I personally have never understood the logic of leaving county government completely out of the sales tax collection here. I mean, yeah. other governments, uh, the city thinks, give me my 3%, trust me with it, I'm going to use it, okay? Everybody needs a revenue stream to work. And how any commission or any legislators ever left county, your county government completely out of sales tax is beyond me, and I just don't understand it. Uh, the commission is very concerned in spending your money wisely. Does anyone out here think that they are presenting a this uh, one cent sales tax sales tax proposal to win a popularity contest? Does anyone think these guys are doing this to try to get reelected to their next term? No, it, they're doing this because they've studied it, they've looked at it, they live here, and they feel like this is the best way for our county to go. And I would love to see other people get on board, and I would love to see other cities and towns get on board and help make Jackson County a better place. That's, that's my thought. Uh, it was a real tough decision, and I admire the guys for stepping up and, and taking care of this. Uh, cost, if we've estimated, we've looked at it, originally there was a number thrown out, discussed, that was 60-something dollars. That basically was taking 53,000 citizens, dividing it by 3.3 million, and that equaled about 60 bucks. Once we got information from the uh, Chamber of Commerce on the amount of tourism dollars that's coming into this county from out of state, it's mind-boggling. So that number changes uh, tremendously, and, and we all feel like we're looking at about $25 to $35 per person uh, on, on, on this cost. Most all of my taxable income is spent here in Scottsboro. I live here all my life. Uh, that rate equates to 8% as we mentioned out here, 9% uh, in Scottsboro. That's where I buy most everything that I need. Uh, hardly anyone that I've talked to in the past few months realized that uh, county government gets none of the sales tax. So don't don't feel bad if you didn't know what three or four years ago. I didn't know the percentage. I knew they got a little bit, but I didn't know that. And, and as we went around, nobody understands that. So we're trying to clear all this up. But this monthly collection comes into the office. We immediately process two checks to clear it out. 69% to the Jackson County Board and 31% to the Scottsboro City Board of Education. And that account is clear. So we get none of that. And I think we've made that clear, but again, no one previously understood that. To say Jackson County's sales tax rate is high at 2%, here are the facts, people. This is not just made up. 
And first, please keep in mind, we can do nothing about the 4% sales tax. We can do nothing about the 3% city tax at Scottsboro or the 2% out here. So that's out of our hands. So regarding county tax, 26 counties are already at a higher rate than ours. Most of those have already moved to 3%. Some are as high as 4.5%, where it's called a special sales tax. Uh, 22 counties are at 2%, 2% like us, but 11 of those 22 get a good portion of their sales tax to help operate their government. We get nothing. Then there, that leaves 19 counties with a lower rate, and 10 of those get a portion of the sales tax to operate their government. Uh, I will assure you that all these other counties that are lower, they're looking right now too. They're facing some of the same problems we are, and they're looking at the same problems we're looking at. Uh, residents that live in the fringe area, I've heard this, uh, if you live in extreme northeast Jackson County, you may be five minutes from Kimball, will you drive all the way to Scottsboro instead? Good question. Probably not. But it's not because of the sales tax. It's a convenience issue for these people. They don't, it's not, it's not whether it's 9% here or 8% there. It's five minutes to drive to Kimball. It's 35 minutes to drive to Scottsboro. So it's a convenience issue. It, sales tax doesn't come into play with the fringe areas that we're losing already. And when I go out of town to buy something, and probably like uh, some of you guys, I go because it's not available in Scottsboro. I need something that's not here. Or uh, there's, there's a restaurant I'm going to eat somewhere or something. But, I try to shop locally, and I think most people here do. But there's just some things that Scottsboro doesn't offer, and we all go out for that. County roads, I'm not going to spend much time. They've done cover that good. Gas taxes are down. He mentioned the numbers, but to give you another idea, we're going to get less gas tax money this year than we got 10 years ago. Now, that's pretty sad, but that's the facts. Less than we got 10 years ago. Counties that have better roads, put more money than just their gas tax money to their roads. And that's that's what's happening around. And we have to look at another way to put money toward roads. Volunteer fire departments. Uh, I want to touch on that because if you live in the county like we do, and if you live in a lot of the small towns in our counties, you have an emergency, you dial 9 uh, 911. <coughs> Paid staff doesn't come to your house. It's the local volunteers. Those guys are going to be the first one here and very possibly help save somebody's life or assist in some way. And, and these people get out in all hours of the day and night, all kinds of weather. They don't get paid a dime. And then they have to get up and go to work just like we do the next day. And with the cuts that are facing them, some of these departments are going to struggle. And we need to support this, guys. I mean, this, this is a very important thing. I've seen them work. I've seen them in my driveway. And you cannot put a price tag on what these guys do for us. I mean, I cannot put a price tag on that. And touched on homeowners insurance, uh, drastically could change if the ratings drop or if one closes. Uh, I just think it's critical that we, we look at what's facing us there. I think we, we all agree the world we live in getting more dangerous, threatening more every day. The maniac in Chattanooga, what if he picked a school to do that? I mean, can we just say, well, I don't want to put any money toward resource officers. I mean, we can't put one in every school, but we want to put them close to all of the schools where we can get some response time quicker. We feel like that's a very important need, and we feel like the board will help out in that. But this is only going to get worse. I mean, and the way I look at that as a county citizen, why should our county teachers and our county students not be provided a level of protection like city schools get or most other schools get. Our kids <coughs> and our, our teachers are just as important as anyone. And we see a dire need to get more deputies on the road 
where they can respond quicker to a school or an emergency anywhere. And this commission, all I'm trying to, to say, because I'm not an elected position here, you know, so these guys are elected, and again, I compliment them for, have, for, for being able to step out and, and make this, uh, take this, this issue that we're facing and not kick it down the road for the next commission in a few years to worry about. I mean, so hats off to them for that. But from a non-elected position, I'm 100% behind them. And I'm all in this for investing my $25 to $35 a year for myself and my wife for all of these issues that we just discussed. And, and I just ask each one of you to think about this as we go forward. And if it's important to you, talk to everyone you know. Talk to your family. Talk to those people that live out in the county like we do. And uh, it's, 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 it's coming up pretty soon. And it's a chance that we can, I really think we can move this county to another level. But it is going to take a little bit of money. And I don't know of anything else today that doesn't take more money now than it did 30 years ago. So uh, please consider this. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening to me. I tried not to repeat so much, but its uh, I think it's very important that we really weigh this out and look at our future for our kids and our grandkids. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other questions or comments? Commissioner, if you have anything. I'd like to recognize Richie Horton. Our representative, Richie Horton. Do you have anything you'd like to say? No. no. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for having me here. Any other questions or comments? I'd just like to say uh, thank you all. Uh, we'll be professional. That's what that is. Appreciate it. And uh, I haven't seen that in the county commission in a long time. Mm -hmm. Y'all have done it for the best week. The way it should be done. And uh, I'm 100% for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, uh, you know, we, we have these community meetings. We had them before even this uh, issue came up. But this, I hope, you know, we'll continue to do this next year, the years following, because I think this is a good way for, for us to get out, visit with folks throughout the county that maybe can't make it to the courthouse to come to a meeting. And as you saw, we snuck a little bit of a work session in there also. Uh, but you get to see a little bit about the process. But, you know, whether it's a tax issue or anything, we want the folks of Jackson County to know what's going on. That's why we're here. That's why we want to share that information. And we need to know from you what your thoughts and considerations are, which is uh, a huge part of this. So we'll continue to do these meetings into the future. I think we've got one more tomorrow night in Bryant. Uh, that will be focused on kind of the sales tax issue and then we'll get back to our regular schedule later on in the year. Uh, but uh, thank you for those comments and we hope to continue to, to show you that we're doing our best to be responsible and do what we do. Anything else? Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Arnold, do you have anything? Yes, sir. Mr. Probate Judge? Yes, sir. Sheriff? Mr. Horton, have anything? Or did you have anything else? No, I, some, someone had mentioned education and the workforce and education. Uh, I, I did try to get an apprenticeship bill passed this year. And actually, it passed World 1 and 0 in the House, but it got shot back down in the Senate. But that's something that we really need to do as a you know, community, and especially here and really everywhere, is have workforce development. And um, hopefully, I'll you know, submit the bill again and we'll get it passed this time. But it passed in the Senate. Passed through the house and they went back to the city again. They had a little amendment on it and it got shot down. But uh, that, that's something that would really educate our workforce and that's what we really need. Right. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully we'll get that done. So. That goes into the, as far as this or any industrial development goes, investing in the workforce is yes. obviously so. Very when it comes to education, it's important that we invest in that as well. Mayor, do you have anything? Appreciate what you guys are doing. Right, thank you. I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Definitely needed in this community. Yep. Thank you for hosting us here again tonight. No problem. Now, Mayor Woodville, do you have anything to add? No, I appreciate what you're doing. I think it's a real important meeting. I appreciate you taking it on. Thank really you. Good. All right. Anything else, uh, Mr. Miller? I'd just like to say that uh, in, in the past 
35, close to 40 years that I have been uh, associated with county commissions and, and, uh, and uh, local government. Uh, this is the first time that I can recall that a county commission has had uh, uh, the cooperation that we have with all the elected officials and with our delegation, and, and we're, we're really proud of that, and I'm proud to be in this commission. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, I'm not going to say a lot other than I, I think this tax is that we're either going to go forward or go backwards. Uh, I don't like taxes. I hate them. But after, you, you know, the first couple of years we've seen dealing with this budget, we spent days and days and days and hours, you know, going over these budgets and trying to figure out different ways. And, and this is what we've come down to that we, that the only way we feel like we can go forward. You know, I have, I have three kids and, you know, I want to see Jackson County grow, you know, and be, you know, be the place to be proud of. And, you know, but we, we have got, I don't want to see it go backwards. Uh, I want to go forward. So, that's all I got. Thank you. Mr. I want, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Um, and I urge you to get involved with your, your county government, get involved with your city, your local people see what's going on, see what they're doing, see if they've uh, got your best interests at heart. Uh, this tax is, is not popular, it's not fun, uh, but this is about where we go from here. Uh, it's not about where we've been, it's not about where we're at now, it's where we go from here. Um, it's going to be very important, August 18th um, is, is going to be very important for the future of this county. And I urge you to study the facts, do not listen to uh, the person sitting beside you unless they've got facts. That's all you need to base your decision on. Um, and if you do that, you're going to do, do what's right for this county. And thank you for coming. Well, Mr. Guffin, uh, Mr. Label said, you know, this uh, tax proposal is about, you know, where do we go from here? Jackson County do we going forward or, or backing up? We, we don't have the money to stay where we're at. You know, there is no status quo. We could have very easily borrowed a lot of money and done things that we wanted to do or things that make make us look good, uh, and that's that's not what we were going to do. And this vote's either, um, you know, if, it, if it's a no vote, we're prepared to do the things we need to do to balance the budget and, and do the best we can. If it's a yes vote, you know, please come to our commission meetings and make sure we're doing what we say we will do. And, uh, and I thank everybody for coming out. And in borrowing money, we couldn't pay it back. So we just <laughs> 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 make ourselves look good for a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, we again, we 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 appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Uh, the, the bottom line, just like Mr. Label says, as far as what you're hearing, we we've not turned anybody away when it comes to sitting down with us and showing showing the paperwork, showing what we spent. We feel like we've cleared up the budget quite a bit to where it's very uh, much easier for us to understand as a county commission and, and for everybody, you know, if you want to come sit down, we can go through that process. But the bottom line of it is if you have a question, you know, I think th these guys are, are very much available to answer those questions. All of our elected officials, I think, are very willing to answer those questions. So if something comes up, please, you know, call us or visit with us, stop in, whatever the case may be, uh, and ask us that question. We want to get the information out there, and we're going to continue to work hard to, to get that information out there. Um, as it's also been said, this is about going forwards uh, for the county's future, and that's what we really believe this is going to do. And we, we really do hope the citizens of Jackson County, on August 18th uh, is the election day, we hope the citizens of Jackson County vote to give us a chance to show you that we can put those dollars into something that's really going to benefit Jackson County uh, for the future. So uh, we look forward to that, and, and we'll continue to work the next few weeks to do all we can to see that happen. So with that, again, thank you all for coming. I uh, guess that concludes everything we have. I think some of us will probably stick around a bit if you have any further questions, and we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Motion. Have a second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say aye. We are adjourned.